So, I finally got a new haircut and also the iPhone 12 Pro. Hey guys, it's Alex and welcome to the Geeks Table. So yeah, as I've mentioned, I have the iPhone 12 Pro, which I'm going to review a bit later. I want to make it like a long-term review. And today we're going to talk about something special, the computational photography. So Google and Apple and other manufacturers make a big deal of it when they present their new phones, because increasing the camera quality in the new model is the easiest way to convince us to buy a new phone. They inject a few new algorithms inside the camera app and we just run and buy it. And Apple has always been giving us only the necessary minimum of the settings, so most of the time we don't even know which mode was used when we took this or that photo. So to show you the power and the weakness of the computational photography, we will use the iPhone 12 Pro with the upgraded camera. And as you might have noticed, there is another stand here. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Nokia Lume 808 Pure View with a crazy 41 megapixel sensor. I actually want to start with something funny. I will give you a few shots side by side where you could guess which of them were taken by the Nokia 808 and which of them came out of the iPhone 12 Pro camera. And afterwards, we will go even through more photos to see good and bad sides of these phone's cameras. So let's start the guessing game. Good luck and see you in one minute. Okay, now I'm really curious to know how many of the photos did you guess right? You know I read the comments, so please leave one with your score. It will be interesting to check it out. Moving on. I'm pretty sure that I know what is the most popular mode in your camera app. It's the automatic mode, right? No surprise that all the manufacturers are trying to improve it. When a person has no idea what focus to set or what exposure to set, some people maybe don't know what exposure means, they open the automatic mode and hope it will fix all their mistakes. And we can simply see how Nokia's algorithm is just older and not as smart enough. So basically, if you've made a mistake in any of the settings, like white balance or ISO, all the cameras will punish you immediately. However, it's really hard to go creative in automatic mode. It won't allow you to share the mood of the photo. You just have to rely on what your phone decides to do. The iPhone's camera has some filters that you can turn on, but I always feel limited because it's not so many. Now let's talk about HDR. So iPhone 12 Pro received the third version of Apple's algorithm called Smart HDR, and hands down, it does an amazing job. The basis of this technology is called stacking. It may be hard to believe, but the iPhone's camera app starts shooting photos not when you click on the magic button, but at the moment when you open the camera app. The shots are made in different settings like white balance or focus or ISO and they are put into a special stack. The idea is that the camera sensor is very small and in order to produce a nice image we need more data. And when you push the button it actually takes some photos from the stack, analyzes them, takes the best parts and merges them together. And you get a shot. Nokia 808 is older, obviously, so it takes only one shot and in order to have more information, it just has a bigger sensor, 41 megapixel. Where iPhone merges many photos into one, 
Nokia actually squeezes 41 megapixel to a 5 megapixel image and tries to keep the quality. Look at this nice smart HDR photo and compare it with the one from Nokia. On the Nokia shot I did save the sky, but the ground was too dark so I got it with a lot of noise, because Nokia didn't have a chance to take the same shot with a higher exposure. Or here we have a light coming from the top right corner. The bear is pretty dark, but the iPhone was able to keep it bright enough and also save the information in the background, which obviously came from a different photo from that stack. With Nokia the background is washed out completely and the foreground is too dark to me. Nokia's camera has a creative mode which has a manual control over saturation and sharpness and this allows us to bring some color and details to the photos and it will also give them some mood that we want to share. Like here, the photo is still dark but we've added some colors to it. It basically uses a color map, like if the color is A1, turn it into A2, and if it's B1, turn it into B2. And iPhone's photo is more detailed, but it looks more flat and is more like a scan copy of a street. Also, the downside of any algorithm is that it could be applied when it shouldn't. So sometimes the photos are oversaturated and over sharpened, even though I didn't want them to be like that. Another mode that I wanted to mention is Deep Fusion. So the trick is that Apple has just integrated it into the camera and we have no information or UI indication about when or if this algorithm was turned on or not. Sometimes you can actually notice it when you take a picture of something high detailed like these leaves. And Deep Fusion makes it a really good looking shot because on such shots, the details are actually what we want to highlight. We do wish that every leaf or every flower to be sharp and clear. But sometimes Deep Fusion doesn't work, like on these shots of the fountain. The water drops are moving so fast that even the camera of the iPhone cannot analyze them and distinguish. So the shot simply doesn't match the conditions for the algorithm to start working. And also there are cases when the Deep Fusion actually spoils the picture. I've made a series of photos and here you may compare the shot with the Deep Fusion Off and Deep Fusion On. Well, I just guessed that it is on because the photo is kind of same but it looks much sharper than the other one. And actually for me the gamma of the Nokia shot is the best. The shot looks more cozy and has a better color in general. Now let's move to the portrait mode and that's actually good stuff. It's not a trivial task for an algorithm to understand what is in the foreground or what is in the background especially for Apple, which has to show you the result right away in the viewfinder. Pixel, for example, does it afterwards. The algorithm is more destructive to an image compared to the Deep Fusion or HDR, because, for example, Deep Fusion can over sharpen your image and HDR may use the wrong white balance, and you might able to fix those flaws in some editors in the future. But when an algorithm blurs a tail of your cat, thinking that it is in the background, there is nothing much that you can do to fix that. iPhone 12 Pro has some improvements compared to the previous models, big thanks to the LiDAR scanner, but it's still not ideal. Surprisingly, if we simply zoom in Nokia and compare it with the non-portrait mode of the iPhone, the bokeh will be better on the Nokia shots. Nokia simply has a bigger sensor and no portrait algorithms involved. But the iPhone is still better in terms of the foreground sharpness just because it's a separate lens, not a digital zoom. And overall, when the portrait mode does the job right, it's actually awesome. I'm going to compare the cameras of the iPhone 11 Pro and 12 Pro in the upcoming video, because I'm curious to see if the LiDAR really improves the portrait mode or not. What I actually miss in the Nokia's phone is the ability to shoot RAW. I actually use RAW when the sky is blown out or the surface is too dark so I might recover those parts. Like here, the photos are quite comparable, but the Nokia's shot would be much nicer if we could bring the highlights a little bit down or the shadows a little bit up. Or this one. This one actually shows how good iPhone is with the lights. You can see it really detailed. Nokia did a great job as well, but a little adjustment would have made it even better. Oh, and I like this shot very much because iPhone 12 Pro was able to handle it perfectly. Look at these parts where the water overlays the lights. Of course, when we switch to the Nokia shot, we are far from being amazed, but if one would have said that this shot is taken on a smartphone from 2012, 
I'd be very surprised. And again, it's so sad that Nokia A08 cannot shoot RAW. But Nokia Lumia 1020, the successor of Nokia 808, can shoot RAW and it has 42 megapixel sensor. And in one of the upcoming videos, we shall compare iPhone 12 Pro's shots in Pro RAW with the Lumia 1020 RAW shots. Consider subscribing and tick that notification bell so you won't miss any reviews. And we're moving to the evening time. Well, all the smartphones made a huge leap in terms of low light performance. The iPhone 12 Pro actually received a new camera this year, it's f1.6, meaning that it captures even more light. So you can get a better picture with a lower ISO and less noise. The telephoto lens is the same as in the iPhone 11 Pro, but still the algorithms and the optics are obviously better than the digital zoom of the Nokia. What I don't really like is that the iPhone's camera goes yellow once it gets dark, and it may be a good in some scenarios when you want to have this warm, cozy, white balance, but I wish it were more natural. And then this night mode, another computational photography creature that every flagship has to have these days. It makes the picture look brighter than it is, and it does a fantastic job when you need to keep the details. But if the mode of the photo is more important, then surprisingly Nokia does it better by default. And I just had to turn off the night mode on the iPhone in order to have the similar results. Okay, so I didn't want it to be like a competition between these two phones because it would have either been an easy win for iPhone 12 Pro or it would have meant that we haven't had any progress since 2012. The computational photography is great for most of the consumers. You take a shot, it's bright, sharp, nicely colored, and you can post it on the social media right away. But it's still computer logic, which can make mistakes. And we should always keep an eye on what it is doing on our photos. And if we are not satisfied, we should always try a new camera app, or a phone, or a DSLR, even from 2012, because the photos are our memories. I hope this video was useful for you. Feel free to like, subscribe, and tick that notification bell so you won't miss any reviews. And I welcome you to the comments. It's been Alex, and see you at the Geek's Table. Bye!